since we have talked about it that 5 prime end which is at the end will contain a phosphate group which is free and the 3 prime end will contain an OH group which is also free. So there are two ends that is 5 prime and 3 prime. And since we know about the complementarity, so the complementary gene will be 3 prime to 5 prime if you are talking about a double stranded DNA which we will discuss in this particular lecture. So the backbone, this is a very important question asked many times in several competitive examination. What is the backbone of nucleic acid? The nucleic acid backbone is formed up of sugar plus phosphate. And what is the role of nitrogenous bases? The nitrogenous bases linked to the sugar moiety project from backbone. From this particular backbone of sugar and phosphate, the nitrogenous bases will project out. In most of the cases, the nitrogenous bases will project out inside. If you are talking about a double stranded DNA, these are the two strands or two backbones which are formed up of sugar and phosphate and the nitrogenous bases will be projected inward direction. And both of these strands will be complementary. That is 3 prime, 5 prime. So the another one will be 3 prime, 5 prime. Opposite, 5, 3, 5, 3. This is known as opposite polarity or complementarity. So what is the difference between RNA and DNA? RNA will have an extra OH group at 2 prime position as we have discussed earlier that RNA will have ribose sugar and DNA will have deoxyribose that is DNA is lacking an O molecule at second position and RNA will have that particular oxygen that's why it is more reactive. After that RNA will have uracil the uracil is not present in DNA. Uracil is not present in DNA. In DNA that is A, G, T and C are present and in RNA A, G, U and C are present. So the thymine is replaced by uracil. Thymine is also called as 5-methyl uracil. If we will join a methyl group at fifth position of uracil, we will got a thymine. So the thymine is replaced by uracil in RNA. So these are the base pairs of RNA and these are the base pairs of DNA or the nitrogenous bases of DNA and RNA respectively. So what does the particular structure look like? If this is a particular sugar and this is the 5 end, 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end of this particular sugar moiety then it will interact with the nitrogenous base this is the 5 prime end which will interact with phosphate since the 5 prime end is phosphate this end will uh, interact with another phosphate by the phosphodiester bond that we have talked just 5 minutes before so this is a phosphoester bond this is an glycosidic bond and this is phosphodiester bond that is making the bond between two nucleotides and this is the free 3 prime OH group okay so the structure will look like this this is forming a backbone and there is another backbone which is having some kind of nitrogenous bases on inward direction and those nitrogenous bases will form some kind of bonds which are known as hydrogen bonds the adenine will make two hydrogen bonds with thymine and the cytosine will form three hydrogen bonds with guanine. So this is the particular scheme. If there is no T, that is we are talking about RNA, then the scheme will be like this. The uracil will form a double bond with adenine, that is two hydrogen bonds. So now we have to look at the discoveries of the genetic material that is DNA. Frederick Mischer is a scientist who extracted the DNA but at that time he named it Nuclein. Then comes a scientist that is Altman. Altman has done some tests and he found that the DNA is acidic in nature that's why he named it Nucleic Acid. The Nucleic Acid term is given by Altman and the Nuclein is the term given by Mischer who has extracted the nucleic acid for the very first time in 1953 that's a very important date Watson and Crick has proposed 
द डबल स्टैंडर्ड डीएनए मॉडल वॉटसन एंड क्रिक हैज वर्क ऑन द एक्स रे डिफ्रैक्शन पैटर्न दट आर स्टडीड बाय विल्किन एंड फ्रेंकलिन दे हैज परफॉर्म एक्स रे डिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ न्यूक्लिक एसिड दैट इज डी एन ए एंड वॉटसन एंड क्रिक हैज मेड अ थीसिस एंड सम ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑन देयर एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एंड दे केम टू नो दैट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ डी एन ए इज डबल स्टैंडर्ड सिंस दीज आर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री देर फोर सिंस द वन स्टैंड इज थ्री प्राइम टू फाइव प्राइम एंड द अनदर स्टैंड विल बी फाइव प्राइम टू थ्री प्राइम दीज ऑब्जर्वेशन आर बेस्ड ऑन टू फेनोमेनाज दैट इज बेस्ड पेयरिंग सिंस ए इज पेयरिंग विद टी ए इज पेयरिंग विद यू सी इज पेयरिंग विद जी वाई आर मेकिंग टू हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स टू हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स एंड थ्री हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स एंड द ऑब्जर्वेशन आर ऑल्सो बेस्ड ऑन चार्ग ऑफ रूल सो वट डज द चार्ग ऑफ रूल से इट सेज दैट ए प्लस जी दैट इज प्यूरिन्स इज इक्वल टू सी प्लस टी दैट इज पायरेमिडीन्स एंड इट ऑल्सो सजेस्ट दैट ए प्लस टी दैट इज ए डबल बॉन्ड टी सिंस इट्स पेयर विथ टी एंड सी प्लस जी is equal to constant this particular ratio is equal to constant for a particular species for example if we talk about e coli the value of this ratio is 0.92 and if we will talk about human beings its value is 1.52 so now let us study the structure of dna in this structure of dna that is this is one strand and this is another strand these are complementary to each other that is 3 prime 5 prime 3 prime 5 prime there are different kind of nitrogenous bases which are projected inwards and these nitrogenous bases are forming hydrogen bonds with each other the pitch that is one turn of this dna is equal to 3.4 nanometer or 34 angstrom and since one turn contains 10 base pairs so the distance between a single base pair will be 0.34 nanometer that is 3.4 nanometer divided by 10 or 3.4 angstrom that is 34 angstrom divided by 10 so this is the structure of dna which is which has different properties such as hydrogen bonding there are different hydrogen bonds found between different nitrogenous bases such as a double bond t and c triple bond g there is stacking the one base pair is stacked over the another base pair to stabilize the helical stability helical this is known as the stacking force there are some complementary properties that is 3 prime to 5 prime the helix is turned in the right handed fashion so this is all about today's lecture guys and there is another phenomena that is central dogma what is that central dogma as we have already understood the double helical structure the double stranded structure of dna given by watson and crick the crick has also proposed another thing that is known as the central dogma the central dogma means the dna is got converted into rna and the rna get converted into protein so what does this particular phenomena called this whole cycle is called as central dogma which simply means that when dna is converted into dna itself this process is replication when dna is converted into rna that is known as transcription and when rna is converted into protein that is known as translation so this particular phenomena is known as central dogma which is given by crick and you have to memorize this pitch that is 3.4 nanometer or 34 angstrom and the difference or the distance between two base pairs that is 0.34 nanometer or 3.4 angstrom this right right handed fashion is also known as plectonamically plecto namically since the helix or the helix is coiled in right handed fashion this is known as the plectonamical fashion so guys this is all about the molecular basis of inheritance part 1 in which we have discussed the structure of dna as well as about different kind of nucleic acids 
so i hope that this particular video is going to help you a lot in your examination thank you so much guys for watching this video and if you really like this video then hit like button and if you are new then please subscribe to my channel thank you so much again for watching this video guys